welcome to the Girl Dad Show. Welcome to the Girl Dad Show, a professional parenting podcast. Each month, I interview entrepreneurs, leaders, and professionals who are balancing parenthood, life, and profession in the hopes to learn what it takes to be an amazing professional parent. Thank you for joining me. Another episode of the Girl Dad Show. Today is a Girl Dad Talk where I interweave my monologue of uh, my professional parenting journey in between interviews of an amazing uh, professional parents. And um, today I want to talk to you a bit about the podcast itself and really dive deep into um, how I'm thinking about it and what it's been what it's been like for the journey of it and what I have planned for it this year. And um, as many of you guys know, I have started this podcast to, you know, really help myself learn. I have a really big focus on solving problems through learning. And whenever I get a new idea or something that I want to be really good at, I typically, you know, reach out to my contacts and network and ask for introductions to people that are really good at that thing. You know, it it doesn't matter. It could be real estate. It could be pool service. It could be uh, marketing. It could be anything. I just, I I just love to learn more about things before I jump into something. And And I try to master it through, you know, at least one component of it is meeting people that are really great at it. And then just asking them questions and learning about it. One of the big things that I'm going to try to do and learn about this year is like private equity firms and private equity funds. And so I'm already in the process of building out, you know, an email um, copy and a list of people that I'm going to ask and just like programmatically ask five people a week and try to see if I can't get a hundred meetings with people in private equity just to learn about the space. And so things like that. Right. And so the podcast was no different. A couple of years ago, I was in the process of, you know, really trying to figure out how to be a really great parent and also still figure out how to make uh, a lot of money and just keep growing my professional career. And I kept butting heads with the two things. And the two things were just constantly in battle with time and energy and my focus. And, and I think it was because I qualified, you know, being a good parent with time and presence and, you know, really getting philosophical about what that meant to be a good parent for me. And it kept combating and battling internally with, you know, the balance of like, how do you manage within the 24 hour day, you know, doing these two things well. And and it became very, very impossible and hard. And, and so the first thing I wanted to do was start asking people that were successful. And I felt like had great kids and great family lives, how they did it. And that led to about, you know, nine or 10 really great conversations. And I learned a ton and it was really, really fun. And the process was so uh, fulfilling and interesting because I heard so many different perspectives of what I, what I would deem successful people that were navigating parenting and and the way they thought about it. The idea was then to do it at scale. And so how would I do that at scale? And, um, (laughs) then I thought about, you know, would this be interesting content for other people? And then I started sharing it with my friends, you know, the insights that I've gathered and, you know, the visceral reaction I got, you know, and the opinions that I got from people about how, you know, the 10 people I interviewed or the nine or 10 people that I interviewed responded was really interesting to me. You know, they, they had a lot of opinions about it and that's kind of the genesis of the podcast is I'm like, okay, so I know I want to interview a bunch of people to learn how to be a really great professional parent, you know, that builds a great career while also, you know, uh, is a, is an awesome parent. And I want to hear from different perspectives and different cultures and different points of views and different levels of success and different stages of success, both in parenting and in career. And I also think that this is really great content and fun for people to hear. And so I, um, launch the podcast. And I will say it's a lot easier to get very successful people to talk to me when I tell them that I'm inviting them to a podcast. I mean, who doesn't want to talk about their kids and, and what they do for a living, right? It's just, a, it ended up being a very uh, easy way for me to get um, really successful people to talk to me. Because of those kind of like things, I was able to triangulate it into this podcast. And now I have this show where I get to meet really interesting people and get to learn from them and question them and ask them about their value props and how they think about success in work and how they think about success in parenting and how they're navigating the two things. And, you know, you've, you've, if you've watched the show, you've heard, um, you know, multiple extremes, like people from, you know, really hyper-specializing in, in work and becoming really, really great. And then, you know, outsourcing a lot of the 
fun functional parenting activities to function experts, you know, hiring math tutors or whatever that may be and all those other things, all the way to people that have literally paused their career trajectory to be a present and better parent during, you know, the early stages of parenting or whatever that stage is. And, and then obviously everything in between. And there is no right or wrong for me. I don't actually care. I actually think that it's incredible that there's so many people that are navigating this, you know, with you know, good intentions for their kids, good intentions for themselves, and really figuring out, you know, what their culture and value and, and, and priorities are, and then figuring out what that delta is, right? And then trying their best to, you know, be an example for their kid, or being, you know, more um, present in their kid's life. I, and, and there's really no better, better, better good or right or wrong. And I don't actually care about, you know, I'm not, I care is the wrong word. I don't judge anybody for their decisions on how they think that, you know, they should balance, you know, their career and their parenting, you know, and is, and I think that it's really important to hear these perspectives because it helps me grow as a parent and really figure out what I don't like and also what I do like. And I will say that I've already pulled so many nuggets of wisdom from so many of these interviews and I'm already implementing them in my day to day uh, work life as well as in my parenting life. And it's been an incredible journey, but um, just the power of that is really the reason why I started the podcast of getting to meet really interesting people navigating this journey with me, or have already navigated, you know, many thousands of steps in my shoes already and, and moving on to the next part of it. Right. And it's been really, really fun and very, very fulfilling. That being said, um, I have done that for season one and I'm all the way in the middle of season two. I launched on Father's Day. And so my seasons are, you know, July through June. And uh, it's a little bit um, awkward because it's not a calendar year, but it's not a big deal. So uh, for me, it's July through June. That was season one and really trying to figure out, you know, what this was about and really figuring out my my role and kind of why I'm doing this and uh, what that looks like. And I was actually at a crossroads when we came to season two because I, um, it, it does take quite a bit of time and, um, it's, it's not easy to do this and, um, a lot harder than I thought <laughs> it's a lot harder and a lot more expensive if you don't want to spend the time doing it yourself. And so, um, at the crossroads, I started to think about if I wanted to do another season and the culmination of that, you know, in June of last year was that I figured out that it wasn't just for research sake anymore. It was research and, it was also for my personal learning and growth. I had grown so much as a professional and also as a parent. And I also started to realize that it really helped me, you know, be grateful for what I have and have really great perspective on, on the things that I'm building and, um, and really invigorated and inspired me to keep building and trying to be good at both. And that led to the Girl Dad Talks, which was a new thing in season two, right? So now I'm doing this because it, it fulfills my cup and it helps me, you know, focus my energy and time both professionally and as a parent while I'm also learning. And so season two is the continuation of the learning, but I'm also testing to see if, you know, my professional journey and documenting that would be something that would be helpful and interesting, both as content for other people and helpful for them, but also for me. And I will say that so far it has been very successful in helping me uh, center myself. Um, it's like journaling in a very multidimensional way, you know, and I did start journaling this year, which is the first time I've ever done that in my life. And it has been unbelievably powerful to journal. And I can't, I can't recommend uh, journaling enough to anybody, whether they're striving to grow their career or build a business or, you know, just to be happy. Um, you know, the act of documenting it is really, really powerful for your mental health and your, your emotional health. And I will say recording these, you know, these girl dad talks where I talk about what I'm working on, what I'm thinking and, and just pouring my my heart, soul, and mind into these recordings has been also very therapeutic. And just an amazing, um, amazing thing happened when I started to document this. You know, it forces me to stop and think about what it is that I'm doing, how I'm feeling about it, what's good and what's bad. It's almost like it's like mini check ins with myself, and uh, it's like journaling on steroids. And I, I just love it. And it's been incredibly good for uh, adapting to work and keeping a pulse on family and health and all the different elements that I want to keep track of. And it's just these moments where I can document it. And so the podcast has been really, really great for personal reasons. 
you know, both in researching and learning and meeting interesting people and gathering different perspectives in season one. And now in season two, really helping me center the balance that I want to strike between, you know, growing my professional career and my businesses with growing my family and parenting and really helping me stay centered around that by just having a, a moment in time where I stop and think and it happens every two weeks. So it's really nice pulse. Right. And so it's been really great. And I, I think that, you know, for me, it's, it's probably worth it just for those two reasons, but I do want to be uh, successful on the business side as well. And so I'm not really too concerned with it for the next few months, but over the next two quarters, I am going to start doing some deep work and thinking about how do I grow this thing and how do I make this a profitable business? Because I um, love it and I definitely want to continue it. I think I want to continue it. Um, oh no, I do want to continue it. I, I got to do the work. So let me think through this, you know, over the next six months here, but I, uh, I definitely feel the value of it, you know, personally, but I don't know if it's enough for me to continue if it doesn't grow. And even if it didn't, I just don't like having um, a business entity that is, you know, not generating profit. Uh, you know, a business should make money. And it's kind of one of the big things that I, I, I coach, I coach my clients on and I, I coach, you know, companies on is like, you know, don't get in the way of, you know, a business's core essence, which is to generate revenue, you know, and to make money. And so, um, I'm really figuring that out and I do want to break down some of the costs that I, I'm talking about. So you understand, um, what I'm doing here and why it costs me so much money. So there's a lot of things that go into running a show and that I never assumed. And obviously you could have a show that's much, you know, less quality, lesser quality or simpler, or just audio or whatever those things may be. You could also do a lot of the work yourself, but for example, I have to get, you know, schedules going. And that is a lot of administrative work, you know, coordinating schedules with these, you know, high powered executives, these uh, successful entrepreneurs, these builders, these hustlers, these, um, um, you know, quote unquote, successful people is not easy <laughs> and their schedules are crazy. And so just following up with them and getting the scheduled, getting their bio and their headshots, the entertainment release forms, it's just like this, like laundry list of little things that they have to do in addition to getting scheduled. And so I, I hired an admin for that. Right. And so I have an admin that works on those administrative tasks of even just getting those guests on because it ends up taking like 15 minutes here, 25 minutes there. It's just, it adds up and then it's context switching during your day. And so now you have this podcast, like literally ruining your efficiency and everything else. And then it's like, okay, so you have this podcast and then you have to, you know, edit it and you have to process it. And the cost of doing that, you could do it for a lot cheaper if it's audio only, but for a slight lift in price, you can actually produce it in a YouTube channel and a video content because as a video content, now you have the chance of possibly getting, you know, a YouTube um, ecosystem or social network to pick it up and, and create distribution around it. So I started there because you can get audio podcasts from a YouTube or a video, but you can't, you know, get a video from an audio. So I, I started at the top and maybe that that's a way that I can lower the cost, but, uh, it, it's not, it's not, um, it's not so much that I don't want to try right now. Like I do feel like the value of having that additional cost in creating video is uh, worth it. And so I'm paying a, um, editor to basically create, you know, and clean up, you know, and process this video and audio. And then, and then that person will also upload it into all of the different uh, platforms. So they'll take the pro edited video and then they'll strip the audio and stick it into, you know, simple cast. And that distributes it to all the major podcast networks. And then uh, a combination of my marketing team, the, per, the editor and my admin will, I, I don't actually even know who does it, but someone will then also edit the copy that goes into the episode loading, you know, like someone will watch this and then say like, here's the title and here's the nomenclature and here's the description for it. And, um, they'll write that out. And so it's just all these little things that you don't think about. Right. And then now you have this and then it's kind of like, okay, well to give it its best shot to actually do something, you know, you want to distribute it. And so I needed to hire a marketing team to help me build out a website, build out a brand and have a logo and, and, um, and try to grow this thing. Right. So we can actually get people to listen and see if there's any kind of like, 
business case for this. And um, that costs additional resources, time and money. And so I have more and more leaned on the marketing team to do more and more stuff. And we're doing quarterly tests with different ideas. So every quarter I meet with them and we brainstorm, how are we going to grow this thing? And um, we, we execute those tests. And so it's really, it's really fun to see, you know, the content go out and, you know, these tests happening and, and the podcast has grown or especially in season two, it's grown a lot. Um, well, not a lot, but it's grown steadily, which is nice. But I definitely think in season three, I really want to focus more on the growth aspect of it versus the administration, the guest finding and um, production things. I feel like these things are uh, kind of, they're, they're good now. Like we have the systems, we have the process. Oh, I also have, um, I also have Jamie, um, helping me project manage all three of these, uh, vendors, uh, which, cause there's so many of them and then I, I can manage them, but she, I just have her manage them because again, it's like, you don't just time of like doing that. Is that, is that like an, is that the most high value work that I could be doing right now? And so it ends up being four different people, four different groups actually, just to run this podcast. And so it's been kind of a fun journey over the last year and a half, um, building out this ecosystem and process. And, and, um, and I feel good about it. Like, I feel like it's really good. Like we have a good system. Everyone's knows how to do it. And there's a process. It doesn't seem like there's any hiccups anymore. And the flow is really nice. And there's like, there's just a good flow to it. And it's very um, mechanical now. And so as I start thinking about, you know, the process and systems getting flushed out, the right people in the right place and um, all of those things, now I'm thinking about optimizing. And so now my focus in season three is really going to be around the growth side. And so we've done some limited testing and um, different things to see if we can grow it, you know, like TikToks and, you know, snippets and quotes. And then we, we have an e-commerce, you know, play and, and we've done all sorts of fun things. You know, there's a whole like laundry list of things that we've tested over the last six quarters. And, uh, but it's been very slow and methodical because my effort on that has been, let's just do, you know, let's do this for, you know, learning sake and really figuring out how to get really high quality people on the show and figuring out that experience for them. So it's seamless and, and doesn't take up that much time and, or take up much of my, my time and, and working through the kinks of that. And season two was really great because we had enough content and I had enough understanding of what I was looking for and what I wanted to do that it became easier for me to ask, you know, specific types of guests. And uh, now I'm at the point where I'm pre-screening guests and I'm actually interviewing them before the interview just to like, you know, for like a 20 minute discovery call, just to make sure that like they fit the thesis of, um, of what I'm looking for. And uh, I'm also getting pitched guests now, which is really fun. So uh, I have, that's been really fun in season two where I'm not even looking for guests all the time. I'm actually, you know, getting offered guests by CMOs and, and PR people. And so that's been really interesting. I'm hoping that continues because um, as I continue to grow the podcast, that, that could lead to revenue, right? That's where the revenue will come. But uh, that's been a really good transition, or at least it's not like a, a ton. I'm talking like a handful of times that has happened, <laughs> but it's still really exciting because it kind of shows you the light at the end of the tunnel that there's could be a possibility for further growth down that, down that avenue. But long story short, the guest collection, the thesis of who I want on the show, who I want to interview, the process for getting them on and making their experience seamless and the production of the show, getting the show edited and produced and bumpered and sliced cut and snipped for, you know, marketing and all those things and, and loaded up for all the different platforms. That's pretty much getting dialed in and, and it's just about optimizing, right? And so we can slowly optimize that. And now I really want to focus on increasing the tests in the growth side and really figuring out in season three, how I can um, make this at least break even. And, you know, I have a bunch of different ideas um, to do it, but there's really like three major things that I'm going to try to focus on. And then I'll have a million different tests for each three things. But one is grow the, grow the download base, right? Grow the reach of the podcast and get more people to listen to it. You want to get at least a thousand downloads a month uh, for you to be a part of these ad networks. And we're not there yet, which is um, really, you know, it should, we should be there. So I feel very confident I can get that pretty quickly if I just focused on, you know, distribution and marketing instead of just processes and systems and guests and all those things. So I feel like we should be able to get that one, but there's a million different things we could do to grow that to even be on a thousand. Right. And that distribution and those headcounts will allow us to, you know, 
target market, you know, businesses that want to advertise or, you know, do those things. The second channel is literally bypass that and just focus on sponsorships and uh, figure out a channel where I can like, uh, you know, pitch this podcast and thesis to um, businesses that want, you know, this specific niche and demographic. And that could also create the audience and um, bring it back this way. So, and I'm, I'm not really entirely sure, like if that's the way to do it, but there's ad networks, there's sponsors. And then thirdly, I think there's like this e-commerce thing. Right. And so um, I feel like there's three really great ways to generate revenue for the podcast. And I'm pretty sure there's more, but for now, those are the three things that I'm going to really focus on in season three. And then just, instead of doing quarterly tests, I may end up going into like, you know, monthly tests so I can iterate, you know, basically three times as fast, um, and do more things and try more things and figure out what the best cocktail TV is for each one of these tactics at the end of the season three. And then I'll double down on the top four or five, right. And really just go for those in season four and just force this thing into success <laughs> and operationalize the crap out of it. But I think that's kind of where I'm at with the podcast and the journey. And, um, I hope that it has helped you understand a little bit more about one, one of the businesses that I'm working on. And it is a unique one because it, it doesn't make me money. The, the, the KPIs that I measure on this business are really like, have been really around personal satisfaction and, and, uh, emotional and mental, um, growth and health. Uh, and then, um, the, the turning point in, as I head into season three is really going to be around monetization and profitability. So it'll become a normal business focus now that I have the first two things pretty much dialed in and, and systematic. So, um, that's kind of a unique business because most businesses that I create, I'm, I'm all about making money first, you know, and figuring out how to optimize for that. And in this instance, uh, you know, the major driver is not money. So that's been kind of a weird business, but I, I really wanted to share it with you guys because it is a huge part of my professional parenting journey. I mean, it is, it is literally the embodiment of what I'm trying to do with my life right now is the podcast. <laughs> it literally is like me juggling, you know, you know, this contradiction of like spending time with my kids and my family and my wife and spending time building, you know, financial freedom and, 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 and assets and, and businesses. And so both of those take a lot of time or at least a lot of attention. And, you know, it's the podcast is, is really just like, if you, if you kind of peel the layers off, it is my journey in solving both of those things at the same time while I'm in it. And so, um, it is a very unique business, but I'm really glad that I got to share that with you. And it really helps me talk about it out loud. <laughs> Because now I'm like, I feel even more clear about what I'm doing here. It's so funny that I use these podcasts to do my deep think work, but I'm very like, okay, I'm like inspired, I'm motivated. And I think I actually have a really good plan for what I want to do next. And uh, that's really kind of exciting that I, I had those uh, epiphanies and ahas in this podcast as I'm talking to you about the podcast. So meta. One other thing I want to share with you guys before I leave is um, I want to start sharing with you guys different tidbits that I'm picking up from really cool people that are much smarter than me. And I, I try to adopt and test, you know, their frameworks and theses and, and their mindsets and uh, see if I can inherit it and use it for my own benefit. And so um, I, I'm, I'm a constant learner and I'm a constant researcher and so uh, and tester. And so I thought it might be fun for me to share every girl dad talk, uh, you know, something that I'm working on or testing, you know, over the next couple of weeks. Sometimes I test for a couple months, but uh, this one I'm going to be testing for a month and it is uh, the five hour rule. I saw it from a, a really smart person named Sahil Bloom and um, he got it from Benjamin Franklin. But the idea is, is that you want to spend at least five hours um, a week learning something. And it is really, really important that you take the time to, you know, learn something new. And it, it can be related to work, but it doesn't even have to be related to work. It is the idea that you want to be studying. And um, a ton of people do this, right? Like Elon does this, Bill does this, Bill Gates does this, you know, just a lot of people do this. And, and it's something that's pretty simple and conceptually very, very obvious, but very hard to execute because it requires you to commit a very valuable hour of your day into feeding your brain. And, um, 
it's tricky to execute. It does require a bit of a shift in mindset and your lifestyle. And so that's kind of what I'm working on right now is how do I incorporate one hour of learning a day into my work day? And um, that could be reading, that could be a, listening to a new podcast, it could be um, uh, messing around with um, you know, this, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm getting into like no code, you know, or taking a meeting with the, someone in the private equity space. So I can learn that space and just learn more, but, uh, anything that has to do with like tinkering and learning something that is, isn't really related to your current workload is just kind of feeding your brain. And, um, I really, really, uh, believe that this is going to be very, very powerful for me. And that's probably something that I'm going to incorporate into my regular life, but I'm in my second week of testing it and, um, I'll probably finish testing it through the month and I'm already, I'm already loving it. I mean, it already kind of fits nicely into the way that I think about the world and, and business and life, but, uh, it's just more, uh, thoughtful. So it's more spread out. So instead of being like, okay, I want to learn about real estate. So then I like hit up like every single person asking for introductions. And then I interview a hundred people and then like everything's very extreme, right. And drastic in the way I operate. I think this is basically taking that learner's mindset and just making it consistent for the, for the entirety of your day in life. Right. And just like doing it, you know, programmatically all the time. And so it fits really nicely with the way I think, and I feel really good about it, but it's super powerful, this concept of the five hour rule. So if you can um, take a look at it and research it and Google it and learn more about it, but the concept is basically that try to feed your brain with something new that isn't um, necessarily work related or consequential to getting something done for work or your current projects, right? Just feed your brain, feed your brain with something new and unique, a different mindset, a different person's research, you know, uh, um, someone else's book. It could be reading a book. It literally could be reading a book, but, um, take it easy if you can and, and start with 15, 30 minutes if you, if you need to and work your way up. But, um, I know that an hour is a lot, but you really, really do want to get up to an hour and really spend that time to give yourself, um, that five hour a week to feed your brain. And I hope that mindset and framework helps you on your professional parenting journey. And as always, I appreciate any feedback and any questions that you might have about my journey or anything else you want to hear from me as I go about building my businesses and life. And until the next time, um, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, thank you, y'all. Thank you again for listening to another episode of The Girl Dad Show. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please take a moment to give us a review on your podcast service. These reviews help us grow a lot more than you know.